record. Hi there, I am Clara Bellino and I am really honored to be here today with my dear friend, Eve Fleischman. Uh, we are doing episode, I forget what the number is, of Time to Turn the Tables, which is basically a series that I've started with my team about um, shining the light on folks I've had the privilege and joy of working with. And uh, Eve, Eve Fleischman is a talented songwriter, and uh, we met, actually, a common friend of ours uh, runs this thing called Rock Lotto in San Francisco. And we got paired up on this gig where we had a f just really a few days to come up with some music and show up and perform in Rock Lotto. More details on that another time. And um, Eve had written uh, the, the really the very, not just very basic, but the structure of this song called I Came Here. And she and I and another lady got together and we worked the lyrics and tweaked it. And then we went and performed it and we really kind of hit it off on a, on a musical way. And, and since then, uh, I've actually added my interpretation of that song to my newest album. Anyway, Eve and I are about to perform a show next week at the Lost Church in San Francisco. But today is the time for me to interview Eve because I really enjoy uh, shining the light back on the people I've worked with, who I've enjoyed working with, and also to give you an idea of how artists are so multifaceted. So, Eve, welcome to the show. Welcome to Time to Turn the Tables. How are you? <laughs> Hello. Thank you so much, Clara. I'm really happy to be talking with you here today. Oh, I am so happy to be talking with you here today and so excited that we're doing a show together next Saturday at the Lost Church. Um, so, we're going to go through questions that you and I have discussed and, and um, the first question I wanted to ask you which uh, I think is always interesting for uh, the people who are listening to you to find out is uh, how did you start music and when did you know at what point do you remember did you know that it would be part of your life? Um, it started really early for me I think I was my first memory I guess was maybe at age four mm -hmm. when I joined the choir <laughs> yeah. in the Methodist Church. Yeah. Um, and I was in the choir for from age four till age 18, until I graduated wow. from high school. And as I got older, I got bolder, I guess, and I sang solos. And um, But I remember when I was a young kid, maybe uh, six uh, or seven, my mother would bring me out at a party in front of all the adults and say, Eve, sing a song. And, and the, song, the two songs I knew were Coal Miner's Daughter by Loretta Lynn yeah. and uh, Coward of the County by Kenny Rogers. Wow. And, yeah. And so I would sing those songs to my parents' friends and they would all laugh and clap. And I said, ooh, I like this. <laughs> That seems to be I a think common, that was the I'm sorry to interrupt. That, that seems to be a common denominator when we each of us performers, writers, creative types find this moment when we find out that, oh my god, somebody like is enjoying what I'm doing. Uh, that's good. And yet your your uh, your uh, progression is so different than mine in terms of what we were asked to do, but that's so fun to hear. And um I do want to say, I forgot to say, I am we are actually on this end, I'm in the East Coast, on the East Coast, on the East Bay <laughs> in Oakland, California, Eclectic Gallery, and what you see in the back, um, because I always, when I do this, time to turn the tables, try to, you know, highlight uh, some of the influences of the artists that I um, interview, and right behind me, you see a photo of Ella Fitzgerald and Billie Holiday at a speakeasy in New York, and when I spoke with Eve, uh, I said, you know, what would matter to you to be in the background? And my husband, Chris Mickelson, runner of Eclectic Gallery, said, I have this picture. So anyway, that's what's there. We also were looking for a Miles Davis poster, which we couldn't find. But this is here in honor or in support of this, uh, the feeling of this interview. And right on to um, then, um, you know, what were you, you said when it was the first time that you found out that, you know, wow, you had this power with music, but 
what were then and what are now a few of the influences you know that are close to your heart and i mean musical and otherwise like the people who supported you and the music that did and continues to inspire you um you know it's funny because when i was younger i think i just kind of um absorbed everything that was around me so i wasn't necessarily seeking out music but whatever was in my house, for instance, I was very influenced by whatever my parents were listening to. And then as I got older, what my older brother was listening to. Yeah. So in the early years, it was that old kind of country sound that my parents listened to. That's why I knew how to sing Loretta Lynn and Keith yeah. Rogers. Um, and also I like to mention, um, oh gosh, what's his name? Uh, Roger Miller. Do you know who Roger Miller is? I, yeah, I couldn't tell you a song of his, but yes. <laughs> I, you know, he, was, he was a country guy that kind of merged into pop during the 60s, 70s, I would say. Um, but anyway, such clever and funny lyrics and songs. And I, and I now that I know where I am in my, my life with music and songwriting, I definitely feel the influence of him. But as I got older, um, listening to kind of like, classic rock and pop. Um, then I went off to college. I went to Florida State University and um, discovered jazz music there. I really didn't know jazz music before that, but I, I was in the, ja the jazz pop ensemble in college. And I thought, what is this? What is this ancient music that I've never <laughs> heard of before? And it's I just fell in love. I fell in love with jazz. And um, of course, um, Billy Holiday and Ella Fitzgerald, such amazing voices and such different styles. It's, um, it, it's funny that you should say, should say that about jazz because as a French uh, girl who moved to the States when I was young, five year old, and then went back to France, my dad was, is a jazz fanatic. And when I had released, I think my second or third album, somebody said, oh, we hear the jazz influences. And I was like, what do you mean the jazz influences? And, and I, <laughs> I'm totally fine with it now, but at one point I was like, I'm going to be this pop rock chick, you know, and somebody talked about the jazz in my music and I resisted it, but I'm really happy about it now. So uh, it's funny how we all uh, kind of include our influences progressively at different rates, you know. Um, and um, I, I wanted to ask you a, a few more questions, but um, I know this is my interpretation of what your mission is because what you talk about is that you you do music art and yoga and and you're obviously a talented musician and singer and a creative person but how did it happen that you mixed music art yoga and what does that do for you the combination of that and and what do you hope that it does for others why do you love that combination and why do you live your life that way on you know it's a, it's kind of a composite of who I am, I guess. You know, when I got out of college the first time, I worked in museums for about 10 years. I worked with art museums. I worked with historic house museums all over the country. And um, I worked at the, I worked for a Van Gogh exhibit and yeah. I worked at the Andy Warhol Museum. And um, it was really an exciting time for me, but I, my heart was really always with music and I was always wanting to perform. And so I went back to school for music in my early 30s uh, in Boston at Berklee College of Music. And um, I, for, I guess since, since my early 20s, jazz has been a part of my heart and just going to Berklee in Boston kind of really solidified that. It's a big part of my sound. Um, you can see this painting here behind me. Um, the first album I put out I was living in Nashville um, in 2009. Um, I have a little book that goes with it too. Uh, I wrote these 13 songs and then I found artists from all over the country to each take one of my songs and make them into a painting. Wow. So this is one of the paintings it's for my song called Wounded by You. Yeah. And um, I toured with those 13 paintings for a year and a half and then auctioned them off for charity. And I bought this one for myself. <laughs> oh, good for you. Good for you. It's, you know, this, this is why I love doing this series, uh, Time to Turn the Tables, with people I've enjoyed working with, obviously. But um, it's because I think we find out so much. I know that myself, you know, when people 
relate to me as whatever they relate to me is what it doesn't matter but but we we think about people as like oh you're a songwriter and then I, I love doing this because you find out all of us have a much richer life than the one box that some people might see it as in and just to find out about your your touring and oh my god you you know you had a painting made for each of your songs um and and you toured and 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 good for you 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 bought that painting for yourself. I'm glad that you get to have that painting, which is so much part of your history and your creation. And um, um, I want to lead to the next question. Well, I want to combine a couple questions. Um, I know you. we referred to uh, one of your albums, but um, you started releasing an album in 2017 and you're still releasing it. And I, I, I I love that you're going to answer this question in some form because I know that as an independent musician, we release something and we release it and we release it and we release it because it's not, uh, you know, people hear it progressively. So um, how does that work? You care to explain how that's an ongoing process and uh, then we'll go to the final question. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm so glad you asked that. You know, um, I think, what I said to you earlier is um, you know, when we create an album of music or a project, that's like our babies, right? That's what we're yeah. putting out in the world. I have all these uh, you know, pictures on the wall of my albums that I put out and um, you'll see that the, my latest album, there's the Eve head and it's the painting that's on the wall as well. I, yeah. had, that, I had that commissioned as well. And I, it takes so much time and effort and love and joy to create something like that, that to me, it just has to, you know, you have to let it express out there for a while before you can create the next, the next thing. So this Absolutely. is my, my current, my current baby. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, and I, uh, I like to, I mean, I work with a team too, and I love the expression that says, you know, um, you release uh, things, I mean, the world is a big place and we all as creators would love millions of people to hear our songs, but it's a, it's a ripple that grows and um, we don't release it to the millions of people all at once. But it's, it's funny because I know there are people who think, oh, you've released it and everybody's heard it. No, actually, you've released it to... Uh, I, I love that expression that says you're releasing things not to a standing army, but to a moving parade. Like everybody is busy. And so you just, like you said, it takes so much time and love and effort and passion and dedication to create something that it's really never done being released. Where I mean, um, I think it's a little different if you are a, you know, major label artists with funding that just goes after the whatever but we're we are uh flowing <laughs> beings who just go hey <laughs> you know i'm gonna i'm gonna keep uh, presenting this to you and it's i i actually love that aspect of it so anyway um uh let's see what where was i oh there was one more question. go ahead <laughs> please no no go ahead. huh right no you were, you were on to the final question, right? Well, I was on to the uh, two final questions. One of them is, I know that you've recorded in different environments and places and cities, and then I know that you've traveled. I mean, when I first met you, actually the song we worked on that you had built the initial structure for, I Came Here, was, um, my understanding of it, was very much about your, 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 I think, leaving New York and then ending up in Nashville and your personal experience about that. And we retweaked it and we retweaked the lyrics mostly and whatever, but we, we did a co-write on the final thing of it. But I know you've, you've lived in a number of places in the United States, which you already shared a little bit, but um, what, like, what are your favorite places? And I don't mean by that just cities or, or studios or cities or environments to record in. I, I read recently that you're looking forward to going to Portugal and, you know, trying out the sound in this arch of, <laughs> I forget what you call it. But <laughs> so what, what do you, um, what are your favorite places to record? And I don't just mean cities. Um, 
Very good question. You know, I, I did just put a blog post out about going, um, going to Portugal soon, and there's this amazing photo of a cave, right? A, yeah. A beach cave. Um, I love to perform in resonant spaces like that. I, I put out an album last year that was in an empty water tank in Rangeley, Colorado, and just amazing acoustics in there. I'm thrilled that I got that opportunity to do that. And it just made me want to do more of it. <laughs> um, I love, I, I fly, I flew to Nashville and recorded my last album because I have my people there that I've worked with for years and love. Um, but I also, this, this door right here is my closet and I record my voice <laughs> in that closet pretty often. So I'm looking for resonant spaces everywhere, you know. That's Good for you. Good for you. And so, uh, I, I, before I ask you my final question, I want to say it's such a joy to, you know, I know we could go on and on because we have uh, so much experience to share and it's really great to have you here today. I am so looking forward to our show next Saturday, June 8th at the Lost Church, where we are going to co-sing that song that you initially wrote and that we co-wrote the whole making of and that I put one version of it on my new album. I'm really excited about our show together next week. Um, but, um, this interview is about you and, uh, I'm really glad we get people to hear you and, and share your story. What would you like the people who listen to this, who hear this, because we're going to broadcast it everywhere we can for at least a month and beyond that. And so are you, uh, what would you love them to do after listening to interview and, uh, where would you like them to connect? What's your ideal outcome for this? It's, it's, your, it's your call. It's like, you know, reach out to me here. Let me know if you want to co-write, come to the show. I don't know, whatever. It's all up to you. <laughs> well, you know, I, um, I, you mentioned the music art yoga. I am a yoga teacher and a yoga therapist. And I think it's a really nice balance with being a musician. I can feel really grounded in yoga when things in the music business get a little bit crazy and always to remind myself that I'm here to serve and what I'm offering to people with my music is a way to um, bring community and spread joy and, and as long as I keep that in mind um, I just feel pretty happy about it so I love to share music and I love to get people to sing along and I'm certainly looking forward to that when we do our show on Saturday next Saturday and I love the song that we wrote together because just writing it with, with you made it into something so much better than it was. And, um, and it also makes me think of where it started, which is when I got to Nashville and now here I am with you. And so what a lovely progression. And um, yeah, I have website efleischman.com and you can find me on Facebook and Instagram and um and wherever I'm performing, I hope to come and, and sing along. Uh, so, you know, it, it's very moving to me that you share that. It was, it, it's, I think it's just so interesting um, how, how we connected, but also when you share about, you know, what it means to you to be an artist. Uh, as I grow into a, my own artistry, I'm so much consistently clearer about I'm just here to shed some light, you know, hopefully to, to inspire, to, uh, and uh, that there are different missions for artists, but I think we're on the, on a similar page in terms of, you know, just giving something that, that hopefully, um, and thank you so much for saying that, you know, the, the, the song that you initially wrote that we co-wrote turned into something bigger. I think it did too, but I'm really grateful for it. I think it's a beautiful song and um, looking forward to our show. And uh, I'm a little bit like emotional, just going, oh my God, like, you know, some of the stuff you said, I'm, I'm just processing. But um, so thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for um, to uh, Billie Holiday and Ella Fitzgerald in their yes. speak easy for keeping some good juju over us throughout the interview at eclectic gallery which is on 4125 piedmont avenue in oakland i need to say that because uh without my husband running this gallery i wouldn't be doing this here i could be doing it somewhere else but this is a pretty special spot to be doing it um and uh, oh my god you know 
keep, keep on writing and bringing your joy. And I look forward to writing more songs with you yes. and, and, and supporting you. And uh, I'm going to stop the recording now. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Clara. Uh, you're welcome. It's fun. I, I just love this thing of finding out about the people we work with, how much more there is to when we, what we originally uh, apprehend. So I'm going to stop this recording and you and I are going to talk for a minute longer. But here we go. Thank you, Eve Fleischman. EveFleischman.com. That's Bye. Cool. <laughs> okay.